A flowery greetings to you. Marigolds grown in southwestern Washington state will be our entertainment today. Two varieties of marigold seedlings were transplanted into a hydroponic tank on April 19th. In the next few weeks, the seedlings grew and grew some more. We seem to have two different sized plants here. The smaller plants appear to be the petite yellow variety, and the larger plants must be the crackerjack variety. At 45 days after transplanting, something golden appears on the right side of the tank. Yes, this is our first marigold flower of the season. How exciting! This must be the petite yellow variety. After another month, several more golden flowers have joined the show. More buds are forming, and I predict an explosion of golden beauty. Yes, after only 10 days, it's starting to happen. It's August 1st, and let's do a little marigold tour and enjoy the flowers. I believe that this is what Tchaikovsky's Waltz of the Flowers is all about. This is so pretty, it looks just like a picture. Well, maybe that's because it is a picture. It's September 11th, and we're seeing even more flowers. We've been enjoying marigold flowers for over three months already. More of these mum-like flowers have been appearing. Look at the size difference between these two varieties of marigolds. Here's a close-up of the petite yellow marigolds. This is a nice display of marigold flowers growing from just one hydroponic tank. By the way, could somebody please count the number of marigold flowers in this picture and post them in the comments? Thank you. The Flower by Lord Alfred Tennyson Once in a golden hour I cast to earth a seed. Up there came a flower the people said, a weed. Then it grew so tall, it wore a crown of light. But thieves from over the wall stole the seed by night, sowed it far and wide by every town and tower, till all the people cried, Splendid is the flower. Page 2. Let's talk a little bit about how to grow these splendid marigold flowers. The plastic growing tank was 29.25 inches long, 15.5 inches wide, and 5.3 inches high. The tank actually was a store-it-all trunk tray made by the Iris Company. Unfortunately, the tank didn't have a lid, so I needed to make a lid. Three 1x4 pieces of lumber were installed to support eight plants. I decided to cover the tank with some gator skin which was left over from a roofing job. However, if I were going to grow a food crop, I would definitely use polyethylene instead. Although gator skin works well as a cover, there's no quick and easy way to determine if it is food safe, but it should be okay for a non-edible crop like marigolds. I would appreciate any comments on this. The cover is secured by stapling it to the support boards and holes are made for the net pots. The net pots are inserted into the holes. I use these 3 inch net pots, but they're pretty hard to find. So you can just use these common 2 inch net pots. Water was added through the large hole through which the float valve eventually would be placed. The water level came to about halfway on the net pots. Since there was about 7 gallons of water in the tank, 140 milliliters of stock solution A was added. It contained one pound of master blend plus one half pound of magnesium sulfate per gallon. And 140 milliliters of stock solution B was added. It contained one pound of solution grade calcium nitrate per gallon. A nutrient solution level indicator was also installed in the tank. 
The float indicator was fabricated by cutting extruded polystyrene with a hacksaw blade. The large opening for the float valve was covered until the solution level dropped to around 2 inches. Strings were wrapped around the tank to help secure the outer flaps of the cover. Small seedlings growing in seedling blocks were transplanted into the net pots. When the solution level dropped to the 2 inch level, my homemade float valve was installed in the tank. Extruded polystyrene blocks were placed in a yogurt container. A rising solution level pushes the neoprene foam against the inlet nozzle to stop the flow into the tank. Pretty neat, eh? But, of course, you could buy a commercial float valve to do the same thing. Here you can see the installed float valve in the tank. By this stage of growth, upwards of one gallon of solution was depleted on a sunny day. The float valve supplied and regulated the addition of new nutrient solution to the tank. This storage container was used to supply nutrient solution to the float valve. One would normally expect to place the tank outlet near the bottom of the tank, but I will place it nearer the top to reduce the pressure and thus the chance of leaking. But, but, wait a second. First, let's drill a practice hole near the top of the tank. Then insert the tubing into the practice hole. That looks like a pretty tight fit. It should work. Now proceed to drill the hole. Insert the tubing. Use pliers to pull the tubing all the way to the bottom of the tank. This tubing has a pretty tight fit. A short length of flexible tubing was used to connect the outlet tubing to the float valve tubing. The tank was filled to above the outlet hole so the solution naturally flowed to the float valve. As the crop grew and consumed solution, the solution level dropped below the outlet hole but solution continued to flow due to siphon action. Even when the tank is nearly empty, as long as the solution level is above the tubing, the solution continues to flow to a point that is below the solution level in the tank. Let's briefly review the marigold growing instructions. First, fill the tank with water. Second, add the nutrient stock solutions. Third, transplant the marigold seedlings. Fourth, install the float valve when the solution level drops to about 2 inches. Fifth, add water and nutrient stock solutions to the supply tank every 2 weeks or so depending on the size of the tank. Let's briefly address the fertilizer stock solution rate for the refill solution. Start with about half the rate that was used at planting time. If the foliage then appears too lush, then we'll then lower the rate. If the foliage appears yellowish, then increase the rate. Now I would like to read a poem by Robert Frost entitled Nothing Gold Can Stay. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold, her early leaf's a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. Fall arrives, and then Jack Frost brings cold weather, and then nothing gold can stay.